So I have these two pots here um, that both have different kinds of rosemary in them. And um, I was had a surgery that back in August, and so a lot of my plants didn't get cut back because I was pretty much disabled at the time. So I'm going to cut these back because these really should be perennials, meaning they come back year after year. I shouldn't have to replant them. So I'm gonna cut them back and I'm gonna give them some water and see if I can get them to sprout again. So let's go ahead and start giving them some water. I'll cut these back. We're having our first 80 degree day right now, so it's a good time to do this, and it's mid-April at the moment. So this is what I'm growing inside so far um, that I've planted. I've, you know, always um, use, use these um, peat pots every year for certain plants. Uh, my tomatoes, my peppers, um, some of my squash. Um, and I use them because, you know, birds love to take my seeds is one of the main reasons I do these peat pots. And um, I also can start them early indoors when it's still not hot enough to put them outside. Um, we have a saying here in Colorado, you never put your stuff into the ground um, until after Mother's Day. Of course, there's certain things you can, like onions and spinach. Um, you know, your snap peas, things like that. Um, they like the colder weather. Um, I usually plant my kale about now outside, but I have problems with birds, with finches. They always take my seeds. So this also helps from that. So I've got some striped um, sweet peppers going, some golden zucchini, some acorn squash, some regular zucchini. Um, then I've got... The, some tomatoes I've grown over and over again. That's why I've got a long row here because uh, they're huge and they're just the greatest romas um, and they're very adapted to my garden. I call these the Kardashians <laughs> because they had a defect in them where they were um, their center, their romas, and the center uh, part of the roma would be indented and um, like they were waist trainers and so I deemed them the Kardashians and I plan them every year and they come out with a waist training Roma you know waist um, and so we always get a kick out of them so these are my Kardashians um, and then these are just regular sweet peppers I am growing some lavender indoors this year and some lemon balm um, and I'm probably going to plant some chamomile and and some other things, I'll do my basil, I'll direct seed my basil outside once it gets a little warmer. So here we usually don't put out most vegetables and fr uh, fruit um, until after Mother's Day here in Colorado. This one should come back this year. This is chocolate mint. If you've never grown chocolate mint, I totally recommend it. You can put the leaves in a tea, you know, dry them out, put them in a tea. You can put the fresh leaves in your smoothies. It just is, you know, you can even make ice cream out of it. It's just wonderful. And it, I did break this down a bit in the fall, um, but it should come back here soon. It's hard to kill mint. So these are elderberries and they come back every year. As you can see, I haven't cut back my canes because I wasn't able to being sick. Um, but you can see that there's some sprouts coming in um, on both of these that I have. That's one also. Um, so I'm going to start watering these too and cut back these canes. Um, you know, so you'll, the ones that don't have sprouts on them I'll cut back. If you've never grown elderberries, I highly recommend it. They, are, they come back every year no matter how cold of a winter we had. And they are just wonderful to have. You can put them in your smoothies. You can make ice cream out of them. Um, and I always get my fruit, berries, and grapes and things like that from Stark Brothers. I highly recommend Stark, Stark Brothers. Um, I've got the healthiest plants I've ever gotten. I've gotten berries from, like, you know, Home Depot. And they never make it. They're just, they're really bad. So these are my grapes which um, are 
real popular with the finches at the moment. <laughs> they're coming in and they're grabbing these. Uh, they break off real easily to make their nests. Um, if you've never grown grapes, they're so easy. I just, you know, you want a really sturdy trellis. These are getting so big, I'm probably going to have to put a top over here. They act as great um, barriers between uh, me and uh, my neighbors. And um, I always have a ton of Concord grapes at the end of the season. They just, you wouldn't believe how much these yield. And I had a yield my first year. These ones are goji berries that I um, planted several years ago and it has just gotten so big. As you see, I've had to give it a lot of support. I've got one of these tomato um, cages here. I had to put some metal up here. Um, it just got really top heavy and um, lately it hasn't been producing uh, berries which I've been really disappointed in. I had berries the first couple of years and now I'm not getting berries so I'm considering taking this down but it really does give me a lot of privacy. And my tulips and daffodils are really really late this year. Um, they're just starting to come up. It's mid-April. I should have seen these a couple of weeks ago. Um, but we've had like really um, a really cold winter and you can see the the goji berries starting to come back too. So these are grapes also but these are Thompson grapes and I planted these oh probably a year ago and I think I got them in the ground too late and they hadn't taken off like the Concord did so I'm hoping they come back this year and do better. Um, but the Thompsons are the ones that you use for, you can use their grape leaves and not to mention their fruit um, but you can use their leaves to make domas you know the Greek um, leaves the grape leaves that are wrapped in um, rice um, and they have a really good mint flavor to them I love them and then here's another pot I broke down I actually made a video on me breaking these down um, so if you wanted to see the difference from when I did it in the fall and now in the spring, you can watch that video. I'll put it at the end of this one. Um, it's winterizing your garden, I think I called it. But you can see all the tomato uh, branches that are in here. So they're not going to completely break down over one winter, um, but they're going to really aerate your soil for um, this upcoming season. So I'll break this down even more, mix it up into the soil um, to help with the aeration. Um, tomatoes are hard to break down um, because their stems are very woody. Now some of the pots I was able to break down the um, the root systems and what was in the pot. Um, you never want to throw out plant material. I just mix it up in the soil and it breaks down over the winter. Um, so these are the roots from whatever I had in this pot last year. So this is also a time I'm going to start putting compost um, into my dirt. So this is my compost tumbler that I use all year round. One side has a plus, one side has a, a clock on it. This means that it's sitting here cooking in there becoming compost. This is the side that I add on. So there's two different sides. So this isn't ready. I, I'm adding to that side. But this side um, should be okay to put into my planters. Notice there's a lot of eggshells in there too. Um, those don't break down, they just break up. So I have some things coming up in my pots. I usually put tomatoes and peppers into this trough. Um, I use um, horse troughs, which are just wonderful. They're spendy, but they're worth it. Um, that is some garlic uh, sprouting up. So I'm starting to see all this now that we're starting to get warm here in Colorado. Now if you're growing peppers inside, it's important that you get the sunshine down on these pea pots, um, even though they haven't sprouted. Um, the sun helps activate the seed, um, not to mention warms up the soil, but as you see I have a heat pad too that I use at night to get these seeds going.